Anthony Field and a first look at the men's long jump T13. This is least visual impairment. And it's Per Jonsson of Sweden, who's the first up we're going to see. Jonsson, a regular, solid competitor for a great athletics nation who's got a, looks to be beyond six meters. 701 is his season's best, it's the best of the field, lifetime best is the best of the field as well. Use the board absolutely perfectly. Couldn't have asked any better than that. Other prime candidates in this should be even Kano of Spain and Vladislav Zlatanov of Bulgaria. But again, this competition underway. Jonsson. Very solid way to go. 7 meters 15. It's a new lifetime best. And he's way out in front by 40 centimeters ahead of Kano of Spain, who's got a 7.65. This is Egminas of Lithuania. Two fouls early on. And doing his best to get back into the competition. There are only seven in this, so they will have six attempts all the way. Per Jonsson, the reigning European champion Ivan Kano Blanco of Spain, the uh, silver medalist, and there was a Swede in third Tobias Jonsson who's not competing in this. Well, as long as he used the board, he's going to register a mark, but you know what? That's three files out of three. The T11s, they have to use the guide on the, uh, on the launch pad, the clap, and that is so marginal. But there's the breaks. It is full IAAF rules. There's there's no charity for the visual impairment, and it's three fouls in a row for Egminas, and he is in trouble. Now this is the European silver medalist from uh, Swansea last year, Ivan Kano, 6.92. Lifetime best set this year, 6.75 he did in the first round. Needs to improve by 40 centimeters to match Jonsson, and he would actually go in front on can back. He's gone out a good distance, but is that enough, I wonder? 6.75 and 6.71 in his first two rounds. Could have used the board a little better, but not much better. Well, well. Shades mandatory here, you don't want to be caught without them. Six forty two, he stays in second place. We're expecting great crowds in the evening because uh, you don't have to be out in the sun all day. Let's return to the men's long jump. United States, Tyson Gunter, currently lying in third place with 6.56. Per Jonsson, the European champion, leading this at the moment with uh, his lifetime best of 7.15. Well, it certainly looks like it's a clear jump there. Yeah, tough to see at first, but it certainly is a, a clean jump. There's no doubt whatsoever that. Waiting now to see what the actual distance is for that for Tyson Gunter. It is 6.44, so not as good as his second jump, so he remains in fourth place as Tyson Gunter. Now, 
for Kazakhstan, Islam Salimov. Uh, 5.79 in the opening round, finding himself down in sixth place. So really needs to improve by about half a metre to get into contention with the medals without even getting into the medals. His lifetime best is 6 metres 30, which at the moment would be good enough for fifth, and he's in sixth, so maybe he's just about found his level. Or remained at his level, probably to be more accurate. Six oh eight, it's an improvement, it's closer to his lifetime best, but he stays in sixth place. So there we have it, is that after the third round, it's Pear Johnson who leads with 7.15, a personal best for him from Kano in second and Zlatanov in third. Well, let's go live to the lunge um, now, and it is uh, Gunter. Here we are, live to the long jump, and the man who... Tyson Gunter there. Well, that is as close as you can possibly get to not being fouled by Tyson Gunter. With an, currently sitting in fifth position. Let's see how this one pans out for him. No, he couldn't put any tighter to the board there. 6.54, so it doesn't improve on his second jump of 6.56, and he remains in fifth position. Being led at the moment still by Per Jonsson, who's jumped 7.15. This is the Bulgarian Zlatanov Radislav, who's currently in fourth position. His fourth attempt here. So he needs to improve if he's getting to the middle positions. Currently in fourth, up to the board. Doesn't seem too happy with the jump. He's well behind the mark though, there's no doubt whatsoever, there's no, no foul there. So it's Latinov, who went into that jump in fourth position. He doesn't improve either on his earlier jump of 6.61, only 6.23 there, so he remains the Bulgarian in fourth position in the T13 long jump final. So let's return to the men's long jump final. This is the T13 for minimal visual impairment. And for Lithuania, it's been a struggle uh, so far for this. A young 18-year-old uses a minus. Let's change that slightly. This young 19-year-old uses a minus. Today's his 19th birthday. He's had four fouls in a row. <laughs> Well, things will be looking up if he can. He didn't use the board at all, but you know something? That will count. That is the mark of the board. It was very, very short. It was uh, five metres, barely, I think. But it actually gets him on the board. He's at four fouls right at the start. Uh, they had a big technique problems pretty much today, obviously. The jumps have been relatively fine, actually. The knocking around there. Uh, 
six metres from him, barring the fact there have been fouls. And then when he does register, he, he took off very, very early. He didn't use the ball at all. He was around 30, 40 centimetres shy of the line of the plasticine. And that's going to come up as 4 metres 34. That might even have been a 5 metre jump. He pulled out as well, because obviously it had gone wrong on him. But it's his best jump of the day. Islam Salimov of Kazakhstan is next. Well, Salomon, his best so far, just the 6-1-2. Uh, so let's see if he can do any better on his uh, fifth attempt. Well, that one certainly looks reasonable enough. Just wait to see whether he's got the uh, the red flag. Looks clear. Yeah, it's well behind the line on that one. Well behind. So Salomon. In sixth position. It won't improve to be anywhere near the top. That's for sure. But he might well improve on his earlier jump. I promise you, we will know what he actually jumped. 6.10, so that is down two centimetres on his jump in the fourth round. So Chevarov in third position. Good hang time in the air. The question is though, did he go far enough? to improve on his third place position where he is at the moment. Well timed, well jumped. Good use of the arms getting through. Perfect technique. It all counts though. It all counts now for the actual length and distance as he talks to his coach there. He just finds out what he needs to improve on for his next jump. But he appears happy with what he's actually done there. Will he be happy with what actually comes up on the big screen? So 6.53 is down on 6.65 and what he actually achieved in his last jump. So it must get more difficult for the athletes, obviously, as it goes through with the eight. We go back to Gunter whose birthday was yesterday. Well, Downing knows all the details. Turn 29. Fifth attempt. So, Gunta, moving in. Well, that there looks as if he might have gone a little bit too far. Sometimes you can't tell, and he's miles over. You could tell from the uh, the board straight away, but the body language didn't give it away too much. So Tyson Gunter, a foul there on that jump. And he remains in fifth position. Does the American with the best of 6.56. So the Bulgarian Zlatanov, who's fourth. Let's see if he can improve. And that there sounds like he's given a big clatter to the board as he's taken off. And there's no doubt that's a foul. The uh, staff coming in to, to clear up straight away, so that's a foul there for Zlatanov. So he doesn't improve on fourth position. So as it stands, it's Jonsson. Blanco and Shevarov who fill the top positions. Up next will be Per Jonsson who leads at present with a third round jump of 7 metres and 15. He looks pretty cool in the stands, there's no doubt in that whatsoever. 
doesn't need a hat. He's just got the shades, a bit of sun cream, and away you go. If I had skin like that, I'd be very happy to be out there with a bit of sunshine as well. With me, I'd burn up in a moment. So here we go. Johnson getting the crowd really revved up for this jump. Let's see if he can improve on his third jump of 7.15. He's had one foul on the way. 5.96 we started off on. So a happy enough start for the Swede. And his third jump, which he was happy with, but since then, it hasn't been great. So let's see what he can come up with. The arms are out and he steadies himself. Sunglasses on, gets ready to move in. Well, that looks like it's gone way over the ball with the foot as well. Not happy with that one. Uh, Pierre Johnson, he'll stay in first position in this T13 long jump final. Yeah, at least half a foot length over the uh, red line there for Johnson. So, not his best jump. That's a second foul for him out of five so far in this competition. But as you can see, the 7.15, his third jump leaves him in opening position. So after the fifth round, Per Jonsson leads Blanco, uh, who is 6.75. So there's 30 seconds difference there. And Shevarov, it was Bekistani, is in third position at the moment in the medal positions with 6.65. So let's go back to the men's long jump T13 final. It's Latinov with his final attempt. 661 is best so far. Currently sitting in fourth position. So he's got some improvement to do. He doesn't look too happy with it though. If he wants to improve and get into those middle positions, nothing the matter with the actual takeoff. Probably a few centimeters shy of where he wanted to be. The Bulgarian. Now he just awaits to see what the what the distance is. But he's walking away. You can always tell by the body language, it doesn't look rather impressed. So it would appear as, he, as though he's going to stay in fourth position. And that's exactly what's going to happen because he's jumped 644. So he will finish in fourth position for the T13 men's long jump final. Still being led by Per Jonsson with his 7.15. He jumped in his third round. There is the main question. As he lines up for his uh, sixth and final attempt. Regardless of what he does in this jump, he will still be leading in the competition. The only question is, can he improve on the 7.15 personal best, which he's already jumped in this 2015 Doha World Championships? Calms himself down. Focuses on what he needs to be doing. One push off, away he goes. And here comes Pierre Jonsson to see if he can improve on that jump of 7.15. No, he can't. That's a foul. Straight away. So he turns to the crowd. So Jonsson, barring something drastic happening, will stay in first place and will take the gold medal in the men's long jump T13 final. His last jump there, you could see really went for something, did Per Jonsson. Didn't come off, he was looking for an even better jump than his personal best that he set in that third round. It wasn't to be. But he will be the man who comes away with the gold medal. There it is, confirmation in second place. It's Kanyo Blanco with 6.75. And it is the Uzbekistani Shevarov who comes in with a bronze medal for his country on the opening day.